Vibrant, vibrant, vibrant music teaching. Proven and practical tips, strategies, and ideas for music teachers. This is episode 89 of the Vibrant Music Teaching Podcast. I'm Nicola Canton, and in this show, we're going to talk about making games more fun in one-on-one lessons. Welcome back to the Vibrant Music Teaching Podcast. So last week, we talked about different ways to increase your lesson time using different types of lesson formats and also finding ways to save some of your private lesson time for this kind of fun stuff, quote unquote, like games and creative skills and improv and all of that. So if you don't move to a different lesson format, you come across another problem in the area of games, and that's that it's a bit lame. They're not quite as good as if you had multiple students together. I think we can just recognize that fact. and. Take it from there. Because peer to peer learning, um, playing games with your peers, with, well, even with other students of different ages, is absolutely one of the best environments to do that in. But it's still better to play some games than to play none. So even if you need to play games with your teacher, that's still fun. It's still a great break from the bench, it's still a great way to consolidate learning. But I do get questions from teachers about this sometimes because it's a little bit tricky to make it work, you know, because like, you know, all the answers or you don't want to be the one that wins. And there's all these different things that come up. So if you've already listened to last week's episode, you've made a bit more time, but it's in a private lesson setting or most of it is going to be in that format, then I have you covered. Today, we're going to talk about a few different ways that you can make this work. If you are a teacher who can't come up with any social time in your lessons, like in buddy lessons or partner lessons, whether you're working in a school and you're restricted by that, or in a larger studio and you know you have to go by their rules, or you have other restrictions on your time and the way you can format your lesson. So the first little tweak that you need to try and make when you're playing games with your students, one-on-one, you know, the two of you playing a game together, is to basically make them do both roles, both sides. And this is just a very simple tweak, but it often, it sometimes doesn't occur to teachers straight away. This is the most common way I hear of teachers making this work. And that's, let's say, for example, you have a game, which is, okay, the it's a board game. I'm just making this up, but it could be several different games for VMT, for example. The path is the letters. And then to move forward, you pick up a flashcard, a note name card, which shows the staff and a note on it. And you need to name the note and move forward to that note, that letter on the path. Okay, I hope that you can visualize that. So if that's the case, yes, if it was two students playing together, they're not going to get to move forward if they get the note wrong. But you can play it that everyone always gets to move forward and it's just a game of chance then. And the student is always going to be the one to name the note. So this is as simple as they turn over the first card and they say, oh, it's an A. And you say, yep. And they move forward to A. Then you turn over card and you just say these magic words. And what did I get? And they say, oh, it's an F. Because I have never had a student say, well, that's your job. I don't have to name that one. Like, I've never had that response ever. I just say, oh, and what did I get? Great. And I correct them if they're wrong and I still move forward. It's really as simple as that. And that trick works for a huge amount of game. What that won't work for is if you have a game where you, the element of chance is not dependent on the card. So, for example, if the game requires you to turn over a card and answer the question on the card and then roll the die and move forward that many. well. That's not going to work if you answer their question. Okay, so if that's the case, what you need to do is put in a teacher penalty or a student bonus. And by the way, that's just one example of a game that works like that, right? Where the element of chance and the question are not connected. The skill is not connected to the element of chance. 
That's just to give you one example. But if you have something like that, where it's not going to work to just make the student name both of the answers, then you need a teacher penalty or a student bonus. One or the other will work. So, for example, if they get a bonus point for answering the question on the card in the game, or they get a double roll if they get something right, then you just never get that. Right? You're just stuck with the single roll of a die, or you're stuck with one step at a time when they can get two, that kind of thing. Or you have a student bonus. So you take the rules as they normally are in the game, except you probably don't bother answering the questions because you know all the answers, but they always get a bonus point for answering the question. You get what I'm saying? So if they're turning over a card and it says, what is this called? And they say treble clef. Okay, awesome. They get to roll the die, but they also get another step beyond that. They get to add one to their score or they get to roll two dice. Although that's going to be, you know, they're just going to beat you in like 10 seconds. So don't, don't do that in most games unless it's appropriate. Okay, so bringing in some kind of simple teacher penalty or student bonus again will make it sort of fair, verging on student winning being the default, which is what you want. And those are for games where there, there is that question element. A lot of games are just pure chance and they incorporate a music element in some other way, and you won't need help with those because it's chance, okay? If you win, you win. If they lose, if you lose, they lose. Oh my god, if you lose, you lose. So it sounded like I was doing that trick thing for the heads or tails there. Didn't mean to do that. Anyway, so if it's pure chance, you don't need these tricks. But if you do have some kind of question to answer, that's two ways to fix it. Either you make them answer both questions, or you bring in a teacher penalty or a student bonus. Now, another thing that I think is useful when you're playing a game one-on-one with a student is to make it about the characters, not you. So in my studio, we use Wacko Erasers as our game characters, our game tokens. Whatever you're using, it doesn't matter. Even if it's just colored buttons, it really doesn't matter. You can talk about everything as being about the characters. So if you, especially if you think a student might be a sore loser, if you lose, Just switching your language to saying, oh, and what did the elephant get? Oh, now what did the turtle get? Okay, and one of those is you and one of them is them. But it's going to take away that element of like, oh, you know, you won and you're the teacher and that's not fair. If you think a student is going to have a tendency towards that kind of attitude, then that's a good way to combat it. This also works when you have two students together, by the way, who just happen to be very competitive. You can kind of deflate a lot of that by just talking about the elephant and the turtle instead of, you know, Amber and Ethan. (laughs) Okay, so that's a few strategies. Another thing to consider is just to do solo games during their lessons with your help. So you're just sitting beside them and helping them with it. And it's a solo game. That's still a great use of your time. It's still a great way to reinforce concepts. And we do have quite a few solo games now inside VMT for you to use for that. And then the final strategy I have for you today is to not do it as a teacher-student game at all. If you have a parent or a sibling that is going to be waiting anyway, waiting in the waiting room or just sitting in their car, ask them to come in instead for at least a few minutes of the lesson time and spend that time playing a game together. So it can be that, say, the parent is going to try and learn the music terms along with the student, in which case You know, the parent, if they're remembering them easily, will probably figure out a way to let their child win (laughs) in most cases. And so if they are inexperienced with music, they can learn alongside them. If they have experience with music, you can use the same tricks as before, or you can give them a harder set of cards to try, or you can just use those games where it ends up being basically chance, even though there's some kind of uh, learning element to it at the same time. So that's a few strategies for you. Let me run through them quickly again. You can either make them do both questions if that's going to be appropriate, where they just answer your card as well as their own. You can incorporate a teacher penalty or a student bonus. You can make it about the characters, not about you, if you need to diffuse some competitiveness or tension. And you can do solo games and just be the helper that's on hand while they play them. 
Or you can take yourself out of it entirely and bring in a parent, a minder or a sibling who's going to be waiting there anyway and get them to play with them. And actually the bonus of that last one is that you can then loan them the game and they're more likely to play it at home if they already played it in the lesson and they don't have to figure out the rules or anything like that at home. So that could be an extra bonus for you there. Just keep in mind as you think about all of these strategies and as you think about playing games in your individual lessons that some games in whatever context with whatever partner to play with are definitely better than none at all. So if you can't change your lesson format, that's absolutely fine. You can still get a huge amount of benefit out of games and I hope that you'll give them a go. That's it for this week. I'll chat to you soon on another episode of the Vibrant Music Teaching Podcast. If you need more great games to play in all contexts, whether that's solo lessons, group lessons, or buddy lessons, or partner lessons, then you can find them inside Vibrant Music Teaching. Become a member if you're not already to get instant access to everything at vmt.ninja.